Hey everybody, been a quiet couple of weeks and that's because I've been working on a pipeline. I've gotten interested in VR and I wanted to put realistic characters into a VR environment. And that means convincing characters with facial expressions and all sorts of stuff like that. Obviously that's a little bit of a challenge, but I've gotten a pretty good method and I'm going to show it to you. And this will be useful if you want to make VR games or really any game where a character gets pretty close to the camera. So let's go over it. I start here in Make Human. Make Human is great because although it's a little obsolete, it's CC0 stuff, so you can use these meshes however you want. Moreover, in the middle bracket, these meshes are the best. Uh, there are good, really high poly meshes, and there are good, really low poly meshes, but for the mid poly stuff, it doesn't get much better than the base model that you see here. Fair enough. If you've never used Make Human before, be aware it comes in two varieties, the quote-unquote stable version and the quote-unquote nightly build version. Uh, which one you get is up to you. The nightly build version is about six months out of date, and the stable one is about two years out of date. Um, and Make Human doesn't really progress. It's not one of those fast-moving projects. So whichever one you choose, you'll be able to just get along with it for a couple of years from now. I use the newer version, the, the nightly build, but uh, if you plan to put penises on your people, you're not going to want to use this version because there are no penises in the nightly build version. Just a heads up. <laughs> With that in mind, this, these, the basic idea is that you can change all these sliders around and create a character that looks like how you want your character to look. Uh, when you do this, it's all fairly straightforward, but don't forget that measure is actually really powerful and you can feel free to tweak this stuff however you want. Um, you don't have to just use these sliders. We're not going to talk about this stuff because we would spend all day tweaking this character. We're making me because I'll be providing the voice acting. Let's go over to geometries. This is the stuff I really need to add in in order to make the character feel more realistic. And that includes clothes, so pick some clothes, whatever you'd like. These clothes have the advantage of being already mapped to the skeleton, so you won't have to worry about that. They have the disadvantage of being pretty bad. We'll get into that later. Uh, eyes, I stay with the high poly eyes because my characters are going to get really close to the camera, and if it's low poly, it's not nearly as convincing. See? Hair. I could go on for a long time about hair. Um, uh, my recommendation is pick a make human haircut and just live with it. Uh, later on, I may do an episode on how to create your own hair, but keep in mind that the approaches you'll find on YouTube are terrible. Do not create hair by creating 10,000 fronds of hair. That's a poor man's particle hair. It's not, not going to work out for you. Um, about 99% of the effort in creating good hair comes from the textures. The good news is the textures that you get with Make Human Hair, they are pretty good. So we'll just live with the Make Human Hair. We might tweak it and use the same texture or something. This is basically my haircut. Uh, I am not a very uh, unique person when it comes to haircuts. So we'll just go ahead and use this. Definitely give yourself all of the requisite pieces here. Uh, we have clothes on, so this almost doesn't matter. Oh, that's not the one. That one matters. Pick one that's at least this, you know, really same poly level. Eyebrows, we'll pick, we'll pick the grumpy eyebrows or the uh, sad puppy eyebrows, whatever. Uh, some eyelashes just so I don't look creepy. And a tongue, of course a tongue. I don't plan to use it much in this game, but it's easier to delete than to add. So we'll go ahead and do it like that. Materials. So most of these do not have any materials, but you do want to pick your eye color and your skin. Right now my skin looks like plastic, and that's because there's no texture applied. You want to pick a texture that um, fits your character and then your skin will come alive. Now this rendering that they're doing here is not very good. Um, it uses some pretty out-of-date technologies. Once we get this into Blender or Unity, we can tweak the materials and it'll look fairly realistic, so that's nice. Just make sure to take a texture with you when you go, uh, otherwise you'll have to bring your own and uh, that will take you all year to try and paint one. Right, now over to the Pose Animate. Pick the Unity Skeleton. What's that? You, you don't have a Unity Skeleton? Yeah, that's true. You see, the default skeletons that come with Make Human aren't very good, uh, or rather they're not very applicable to you, to Unity. Um, for example, default. Uh, you're not going to be able to, to make this work in Mechanim for a variety of reasons. Um, but uh, Game Engine is also not going to be very good for Unity, not because it lacks anything. This is actually pretty good for most of the things that it has, but because there's no facial rigging. 
So you won't be able to get your eyes to move realistically. You won't be able to get your mouth to move realistically. So go and search for the Unity Engine Skeleton and download it. There are, It's available from dozens of places, usually in a big pack of skeletons. Just get it. It's no biggie. You'll know you have the right one if it's got a jawbone, a tongue section, and these dagger eye things. Um, those are all going to be required to make our character look and feel realistic once they're in the game world. So this is the ideal skeleton for us. The only problem with this skeleton is that this hand bone malfunctions for some reason. Don't know what's up with that, but I use IK, so I've never really looked into it. Uh, IK will override the hand transform completely, so I don't have to worry about it. But if you plan to animate your hands painstakingly you know, with wrist movements, there's something screwy with this bone, and I don't know what it is. Tell me if you do know what it is. Anyhow, that's all we need. We don't need to worry about rendering or utilities or any of that stuff. We'll just go over to the file. Uh, we'll go ahead and save it as Craig. This is my second take. And we'll export it. Make human exchange format 2. Yeah, you're going to need to download this as well. Just like the skeletons, this is not part of the default build. Um, you should be able to find it no problem. It's their biggest seller. Um, the seller being everything here is free. I didn't pay a single thing for any of this, uh, but it's definitely their most popular add-on. So go ahead and do a search for it. You'll find it no problem. Um, make sure you get the version. I don't know whether there's a difference between the nightly build version and the um, stable version, but just get the one that, that applies for you. Anyway, export it. Bang, there we go. We are exporting. Once it's exported, you can import it into Blender. Import Make Human 2. When you get the Make Human 2 library, it'll tell you how to install it. There's one set of files that has to go into the Make Human directories, and one set of files that has to go into the Blender directories. It's very straightforward, but you do need to follow instructions. There I am. There I am. I have myself set to material rendering, and I have a sun in the scene. So if you don't have material rendering or you don't have a sun, you might see you know either black or white rendering. I forgot to give myself shoes. Uh, I guess I'll go barefoot. That's fine. So in here, you can do a lot of really important work that we're going to get to later. Uh, one of the more important things you're going to want to do is get rid of a lot of these if you have them. Uh, now, the version that I exported, I didn't actually take the whole body with me. By default, it hides the pieces of the mesh that are hidden by your clothes. However, you have the option to not do that if you would like your character to have a full underbody so that you can apply different sets of clothes. Also, it's not 100% accurate. As you can see, I have a random patch of chest here. So, uh, all told, this should be fine. We're going to save it and then head on over into Unity, where it will sit here and ingest all that stuff. Now, here's where we have to do a little bit of work, because the import from Blender is not going to be very good. <laughs> all the work we have to do is pretty straightforward, but... You're going to have to do it. Sorry, no way around it. You can see that the issue here is that uh, poor Craig, he is um, white. And I know that I am pretty pale, but I'm not that pale. The issue is that the materials did not import correctly. Now, the number of materials is correct, and the name of the materials is correct, but none of the textures lined up and none of the settings line up. So we're going to have to go into the materials and set these up manually. The only thing that needs to be set is the albedo for like 90% of these. So eyebrow, set up the albedo for the eyebrow. Uh, eyelashes, set up the albedo for the eyelashes. High poly eye, set up the albedo for that. Casual suit three, um, there you are. Uh, so we've got a couple of things here for the casual suit. You can see we have an albedo, but we also have a normal map. And I think that this is an AO map. Yeah, yeah, so we can also put that in. Bang. And that'll give us a, a fairly realistic feeling to our suit when we tweak it. Um, make sure that you fix that so that the normal... There we are. We'll have to tweak it because obviously I'm not wearing plastic, but that's fine. I'll teach you about that in a minute. For a skin, we're definitely going to want to have some skin, but notice that we don't have any normal maps for our skin. We may want to go in later and add in some detail texture because we're going to get very close to this face and we're not going to want to have it be perfectly smooth. 
However, the texture does look okay. I still look like I'm made out of plastic. We'll get to that in a minute. Short hair is... here it is. Notice that there is no normal map uh, and no occlusion for hair. I will, we'll get to that in a minute. Teeth map. There are my teeth and tongue material. There is my tongue. Hurrah! Wow, I am made out of plastic. I look terrible. Oh my gosh. We have to tweak the parameters of all of these settings. Let's start with the eyebrows. Hey, Mr. Eyebrow. So what you're going to want to do is change this over into fade. Um, you can experiment with others if you'd prefer. Uh, you don't have to use fade. You could use cutout or something. I think fade works pretty well. But one of the things we need to do is bring our smoothness all the way down. Um, if we have any smoothness, that means that we'll get the glint of sun off our eyebrows. Not really what you want. Eyelashes, same thing. Fade. Just move this all the way down. Eyeballs, same thing. Come on, you. It's hard to do this and talk. It's very fast if you um, if you just do it on automatic. Uh, I can usually get a character fully animated and in, into the game within three hours. So the eyes need a little bit of special work. So I'm going to select something in the background and then select eyes from the list just so that we can see what's happening as we adjust it. Unlike the eyebrows and the eyelashes, the eyes do need to reflect the lights that we're going to have. So what we're going to want to do is punch up our reflectivity. Uh, now, one way to do that is to increase smoothness, as you can see. So let's go ahead and put smoothness pretty high up. But we're also going to want just a little bit of metallicity, not too much. Uh, now we have the option of doing this other ways. We could use it, we could do the specular map, stuff like that. It's up to you how you want to play it. Now, the eyeballs don't have any um, normal, normal maps or height maps or anything like that. So they are going to be a little bit unrealistic in terms of not having a good uh, cap over the iris. Uh, if that bothers you, it's pretty easy to create an additional texture and an additional material which handles just that. We're not going to bother because that would be effort. Skin. Well, the skin texture is correct, but boy, oh boy, do I look like I'm made out of plastic. So let's go ahead and tweak this so I'm not. There we go. Now, one of the things that you're going to want to do if you get serious is you're going to want to get a skin material um, renderer. Uh, there's a lot of them out there, and the big difference is that most of them have some kind of uh, edge light system that makes you look a little bit more realistic. Uh, we can't really do anything with that, so we're just going to have to live with this kind of flat skin. That we'll, we'll deal with it later if we want to. If we add a secondary map that adds a little bit of texture, it'll really, really punch things up. Right now I do appear kind of ble blurry. Let's talk about this guy. Same thing, we want this to not be made out of plastic, so let's lower our smoothness down. That should be all we need to do there. Yeah, that's fine. We can add a tiling secondary map that is a tight weave if we would like, but because I just started this project, I don't have anything that even vaguely looks like a tight weave, so we're not gonna bother. Hair, okay, so this is where things get tough. Uh, first things first, this hair is good. It's not, not perfect, but it's pretty good. You can't tell at the moment, though, because all the settings are wrong. First thing we need to do, make it either cut out or fade. Now, this really depends on what sort of hair you're using. Uh, and some hair you may want to actually leave opaque. So you're going to want to play around and see which one of these you want to use. The big problem is that fade and transparent will screw up other materials that you see through them. So if I had a big haircut, I wouldn't want to use fade or transparent, I'd want to use cutout. But since this hair is pretty close to my head, it's unlikely we'll be seeing other people's hair through it. So we'll use fade. And we'll adjust the... Uh, well, I guess we don't need to adjust the alpha, because we're using fade rather than cutout. Uh, now, the hair still looks pretty bad, and the reason for that is because we actually have two sources of highlights. All of the hair textures in uh, MakeHuman have been pre-compiled. They have all the lighting and, and shadows and stuff built right into them. And that means that they can get away without very much actual 
material density without very much, but they don't have to have a lot of faces. Obviously, some meshes are better than others. This one doesn't have very many faces. It's very, very smooth. So unless we were to be very, very specific about adding in a super detailed and realistic bump map of some kind, some kind of normal map, it would be better for us to just turn off the, uh, the specular mapping entirely. Like that. And now it doesn't look so bad. This can be improved a little bit further, but um, there's not really any point. Uh, one of the things uh, about this that I have t a takeaway from this, about 90% of your hair is finding good textures. So if you do need to create your own hairstyles, be aware that you're going to want to come up with really good textures or build really good textures. Rather than focusing on having really, really great layouts, you need to focus on having really, really great textures. Uh, this simple skull cap is relatively convincing, even though it is just a simple skull cap. Okay. And that should be everything. Our teeth and our tongue are untweaked, but that's fine. We don't really care. So what we've just done is we've gone from Make Human into Blender in a couple of easy steps. It's been 15 to 16 minutes of recording. There is a lot left to do to make this realistic, but as it stands... We have a character, it's fully rigged, it's ready to rumble. If we have animations that we want to use, we can put them in right now. Uh, if we have a world we want to put him in, we can put him in right now. He's basically uh, already ready to start to be put into the game world. The difficulty is, how do we make him feel really realistic? Well, we'll get to that next time. For now, I just wanted to show you how easy it is to put a character into the game world. So I've put myself into um, a Unity environment, and even if we get pretty close, the character remains relatively decent. Uh, he'll feel a lot more alive once we do a few small tweaks and add in some facial motions, which we'll get to some other time. Let me know below if you have any questions or confusion, and um, that sort of thing. <laughs>